Hi hobby friends, let's talk about composition. I recently got commissioned to paint this lovely little Malifaux mini and I tell you when I saw him on the list I got super hyped. The mini itself is great, a pretty understated pose but still full of character and dynamism. But more than that, I love that over this whole model there are really only four elements. The metal weapons, the leather bindings, his exposed guts and a lot of skin. That simplicity of elements means we can really focus on getting things right and drive home on the composition of our paint job. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, just sit tight. And of course, in a less artsy-fartsy vein, this is also a great opportunity to explore a texture every mini painter needs in their painting arsenal. Gross necrotic skin, so stick around for that too. First practical step then is to get some light on this guy. This is the value sketch and all the big decisions for him are going to be made here. We're going to decide what is important on this mini, where we want to draw the eye, what movements we want to amplify, how we want this guy to, let's say, present himself on the tabletop. Luckily for me, Weird Games, the makers of Malifaux, very obligingly give us a guide right on their box. Malifaux comes with great illustrations instead of painted minis for their box art, and I am a big fan of doing it this way. If anyone knows where you can find uncropped images though, let me know in the comments below because what's on the box is usually unfortunately a bit truncated. So, looking at this guy, it seems we have a pretty simple composition. Our eviscerated subject seems to be stepping out into a beam of light, giving us a strong horizontal block. For my money, I'd say we start at the top of this block with his face, and then our eye is drawn down to that icky belly, and then to that big menacing cleaver. Running alongside that is the conspicuously darker right side of Killjoy. That really pushes that arm back in the composition, extending the sense of depth. And although it's unfortunately cut off, pushing the arm back like that charges the hook chain thing he's got with a lot of potential energy. It's not complicated, but it's really strong and I don't see much point in deviating from what the concept artist has laid out for us here. I want to make sure I have a little white paint on every surface with this one because we're going to be using contrast paints next and they play best on lighter surfaces. But following the box art, I'm really concentrating my white on Killjoy's left side, particularly his head and down his arm. The wet palette came out next and the first thing I wanted to do is knock back the brightness of those wrappings our big boy is sporting. This is a value sketch and that means we want to imagine our final product in black and white and recreate that. So the values on the bindings, which will end up black, need to come way down. It's super easy though, just thin black paint down to a filter consistency and brush that all over. With that done, I moved on to getting some texture and detailing done. The airbrush is a great tool, but it has its limits. Nothing beats a bit of brushwork for precision and texturing. You'll notice I'm not using grey here, just different dilutions of white. This is something I learned from Marco Frassoni. If you know my channel, the chances you don't know Marco are pretty slim, but just in case, go watch Marco's stuff. He is a fantastic painter and teacher. One of the benefits of working with varying transparencies of white instead of grayscale is the depth that it gives us. We end up with layers and layers of translucent paint, lending a beautiful, deep texture to the paint job. So how are we doing? Are we capturing that box art feel? I reckon it's looking pretty close, at least compositionally. It's time to get some colour on this guy though. On my palette there are Gilliman Flesh from Citadel and Phoenix Feather, Phoenix Egg and the hilariously named Savage Beige from Scale 75's Instant Colour range. This is a bit of faith-based painting here. The Scale 75 paints in particular are really, really subtle and it can feel like you're not doing much, but the idea is to treat the contrast style paints almost like washes. I'm working pretty loose and fast, making ad hoc blends even right there on the mini. 
I have that savage beige, aka light yellow, on there because I think one key to good, gross looking Caucasian skin tone is to de blood it, and skin with no blood takes on a distinct yellowish tone. I'm also very much just following my lighting sketch here darker colours in the darker areas, lighter colours in the lighter ones. Something to watch out for is too much pooling of paint in the recesses though. We're not really using contrast paints as intended here. The typical intention with contrast paints is to allow them to pool in the recesses of a white primed mini. This gives you definition, almost like the mini painting equivalent of outlining a picture, but it doesn't at all imitate lighting. Our value sketch is doing that job for us, but if we allow the lighter contrast paints to gather in the gaps, we end up with a very odd looking situation, bright recesses set amongst deep shadows. Despite the little bit of extra work managing our paint, the translucency of these paints really makes them worth using in this context. Another big boon is the long drying times, meaning we can really easily blend and smoosh all of our colours together, vital for producing the kind of complex, natural textures we're looking for here. Although I said we were going to exsanguinate this guy, I decided he needed a little blood to keep him moving, so I added Volupus Pink to the palette and applied that in thin layers in just a few spots. The guts couldn't have been easier, just an all over heavy wash of Flesh Terror's red. The Big Chopper got some really thinned glazes of Eldari Emerald and Leviadon Blue. The Hook and Chain were just Leviadon Blue. I managed to get a massive watermark on the front of the blade like a big idiot, but don't worry, I do clear that up a little bit later. Lots of fiddling and fussing, reinforcing and fixing stuff, and the biggest addition, something that will really drive home the deathliness of his flesh, some plague bearer flesh glazed into the shadow areas. Hopefully, if you've made it this far, you're enjoying the video, so why not show some love and give that like button a click. If you have any comments or questions, I'm always happy to chat in the comments below, and you can join an ever-expanding community of very cool folk on the Discord server, linked in the description too. My list of commission painting and my own personal pile of potential is always getting bigger and bigger, so hit that subscribe button to join me on this mini painting journey. And while you watch me fiddle with Killjoy here, let me take the opportunity to say an enormous thank you to all the fabulous patrons that support the channel for the price of three items from a pound shop monthly. I mean a proper pound shop here, where things are actually a pound, not one of those lying ones where some stuff is more than a pound, one of those places with a not inaccurate but definitely willfully misleading name like Pound Expander or Pound World. Look, the point is, there are still places up for grabs in the limited three quid tier. So if you think you'll want to support the channel that way, come on in. Okie dokes, he is coming together now, I just need to add those last few highlights. On minis with more varied textures or man-made stuff, this portion of the painting process can last at least as long as the value sketch and filtering stages combined, but since this guy is almost entirely flesh, there wasn't that much to do, just 40 minutes of pushing some highlights and adding that last little bit here and there. One of the more major changes was redoing the lighting on his shoulder here. I realised he had a bit of a nonsensical shadow. Super easy to deal with though, I just painted in directly with white where I needed some more light, and then glazed over with our skin tones from earlier. The very delicate addition of some strategically placed leaf litter, and we are all done. By working in layers and layers of transparent paint, we've ended up with rich, disgusting skin, and by focusing our thinking into the value composition, hopefully we've really brought this guy to life. As I mentioned earlier, the main axis on this mini runs down his left side, and leaving his back arm in shadow there sends home the sense of depth. A little splash of light over his back thumb makes sure we don't lose the intention of that swing though. And of course, a mini is a 3D thing, so even though I've poured a lot of intention into that main front view, the secondary angles, like this one, should still have movement and variation. What do you guys think? Anything you'd do differently? Let me know in the down below and I will see you next week.